just like that, the new season has taken hold of all of the landscapes around us. The deep greens turn to rich earthy browns, yellows and red hues. The leaves have started to fall and the breeze has gotten crisper. Autumn is setting in and my kitchen garden is slowly falling into a deep slumber. Now it's time to look back and appreciate the harvest that the garden has given us over the growing season. What was once a bright, vibrant, diverse space filled with nature's riches it is now filled with only the most resilient of vegetables. But it's not over yet. Lots can be done and there's much to eat and preserve before the year is out. So grab your cinnamon spice latte or a hot drink and join me for a couple of days outside in the garden. So welcome to the garden. It's looking a little sad to me right now and that's partly because there's so many leaves just fallen recently in autumn but they are going to be used to my advantage. Once I've cleaned them all up, I'm going to add them to my compost heap, which is then going to enrich it for next year, creating a beautiful, fertile compost. That's quite a lot of leaves, isn't it? Right, we're going to the compost corner now, up the hill. Let's go, let's go. All right then. So welcome to the compost corner. This is the box that I'm filling up at the moment. I've been filling it up most of this year. Literally only a week ago, it was like piled up this high and it's shrunk down so much already, which means something's working. Let's get these leaves in anyway. <laughs> Beware of the mice. And here it's got some compost that was last year's version. So I'm hoping we can spread this on some of the beds today. Look at that. That smells amazing actually, which is weird to say because it's all my old kitchen scraps. This is going to go on top of my beds now and it will slowly release its goodness into the soil for March, April next year when I'm sowing more seeds for next year's food. Another thing that can go in the compost heap is all the weeds as well. So fortunately, mm -hmm. that's the next job, but it'll only take a couple of minutes if we're super fast. So guys, what was your favourite crop that you this year? This year, I have to say, it's either been my pumpkins, my giant pumpkins, or my corn. The first time I've ever grown corn. I learned a lot growing it. Next year is going to be even better. But we also made a quick, lovely recipe with the corn, didn't we? We should actually play that right now. Here's the corn recipe by here. So I've grown this corn and apparently you need to cook it right after picking it. Like literally right after. So let's get it and cook it right away. Come on. Oh my gosh, this is an heirloom, almost Aztec corn. Look what I've grown. This is my first ever corn I've grown. Look at the color on that. That is unbelievable. It's like a Christmas present. Wow. Into a mixing bowl, add some non-dairy butter, followed by a dollop of chipotle paste, zest and juice of a little lime, pinch of salt, some dried oregano, some fresh coriander, then give it a good old mix up. Once you've mixed up your butter, sprinkle over some roasted garlic granules, and then brush lashings of the butter on using a rosemary brush. Just before serving, a final squirt of lime juice and a sprinkle of salt, then give it a taste. How good does that red corn look now? I can't believe I've grown it. Mmm. <laughs> it's true what they say about freshly picked corn. There's nothing sweeter. That's the best damn corn I ever had. There's always weeding to be done, but it's not that much of a hard job. It's pretty straightforward. But there's one thing that I really need to get into the ground, otherwise I'm not going to have a supply for next year, and that is garlic. In autumn, it's the perfect time to grow garlic in the UK. So I'm going to clear this bed here, where I've got some calendula that's getting a bit sad. I'm going to remove that. I've got a few leeks that I'll harvest, and then we'll top this up with some of my homemade compost and plant some garlic. I grew so much last year, most of it was actually supplied to my pop-up restaurant, Nana O's. So I'm only going to do this bed here, which is 
definitely enough space to get at least 50 bulbs next year. But first thing I need to do is clear away what's already in here and what's left behind. Does anyone want to join me on this little patch of land in Wales and be my wife and housewife? These are some of the last leeks that I've grown. They're only little ones, but with some of the good ones, a few weeks ago, I made some amazing leek bargies. Let me show you that recipe right by there. As you know, I am Welsh and we love leeks. And I also love Indian cuisine. So today I'm gonna to be making homegrown leek pakoras. So grab some leeks, chop them finely, along with some garlic and some ginger and some fresh coriander. I'm adding some sliced chili for a bit of spice, then getting it into a mixing bowl with some lovely spices. I'm adding some garam masala, ground cumin and ground turmeric. Add a little salt and give it a really good mix up. Then we're going to add some chickpea flour, also known as gram flour. Mix that well with a splash of water to form a sticky batter-like consistency. Then when your oil is hot, pick up a couple tablespoons of the mixture and carefully fry them for around three to four minutes until crisp and golden. Remove them from the pan and place them onto a plate lined with kitchen paper to soak up any excess oil. Season with salt and a few black onion seeds and then let's make that chutney. I'm simply chopping up some fresh coriander, fresh mint, a chili, lemon zest and juice, plus a little bit of cumin. Add a pinch of salt and that's the dressing done. Mmm. All right then, let's go. It's always something to do in the garden. Look at this. Just found this collapsed plant and it's Jerusalem artichokes, one of my favorite ingredients. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Yes, I was not expecting that little harvest. I love a Jerusalem artichoke. So I'm going to get some of my homemade compost. It is a bit lumpy, but it'll continue to break down when it's on the beds. I need a new wheelbarrow. <laughs> You've got a puncture. Call the RAC. So I got some lovely bulbs of garlic, some nice chunky ones from the garden centre. You can just plant supermarket garlic, but Sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. Last year I produced some lovely garlic, but they were small bulbs. That may be because I bought supermarket garlic. This time I got it from a garden center and I'm gonna to attempt to use this. Of course, a single clove within this bulb is gonna turn into a bulb next year. So it's surprising, you'll probably get about 10 cloves in each bulb, which means there's gonna be 20 bulbs just from these two bulbs. 20 cloves next year for two. Look how cheap and cost effective that is. Let's get them planted. So the important thing when planting garlic is that you need to space them about six inches apart so that they have room to grow. Plant it upright so the tip is pointing up. You can just plant them in buckets or in pots as well. So you can do this anywhere in the smallest of gardens. But I love garlic, so I need a big bed for this. It was actually probably this time last year when I was in the rain on my own planting garlic for the first time but it was so worth it because I used the garlic at my pop-up restaurant, Nana O's, and it was one of the major, most beautiful ingredients to my favorite dish, which was a crispy fried mushroom with comfit garlic. So I slow cooked the garlic in extra virgin olive oil, served it with the most amazing creamy pom puree and amazing gravy and the garlic shoots as well. Because the good thing about growing soft neck garlic like this is that you get these skates, they're called, they're these lovely curly bits of garlic, basically I think it's gonna turn into a flower that you can grill off and it was the most amazing part of the dish. So that is the 80th clove of garlic going into here. That means next year, come July, I'm gonna be harvesting hopefully 80 bulbs of garlic. So I need to come up with something super creative then with all that garlic. Maybe I'll do another pop-up restaurant and I can serve the garlic there again. But for me doing this out in the elements, in autumn, it's very mindful and peaceful doing this. It's been raining a little bit today, but it doesn't bother me because this is an investment in my future health. I know I'm gonna be able to feed my family, at least with garlic next year. So do it, that's what gardening is for me, a real investment.
This channel has become so wholesome. Look at me with my rake in the garden, planting my garlic. But anyways, uh, tomorrow when the sun is up, because it's getting dark right now, very early, I'm gonna give you a tour of what I've got growing in the garden, because there's still some impressive things being grown around me. And I'm gonna show you a lovely recipe too. One of my favorite things in the whole world is pickles. Pickled beetroot especially, and I've seen some lonely looking beetroots up there that I forgot about. So I'm gonna go and grab them now and show you how to pickle beetroot. Beetroot is so easy to grow. <laughs> I've literally just forgotten about this and I seem to have grown the most ginormous beetroots ever. Look at this. What? This is crazy. Because I just planted um, a few little seedlings of beetroot together, multi-sowed together. And look how many beetroots there are, grown in a huge cluster. They each grow and push each other apart to create room for one another. Look at the size of this one. That is a thing of beauty. I know who would be proud of that beetroot, Mr. Dwight K. Shroot. Ah, oh, fuck. that is at least two kg of beetroot that just popped up from nowhere. So to make Dwight's famous pickled beetroots first up, peel them and trim off any leaves. I like to do all that on my board line with some greaseproof paper to stop the beet staining my board. Let's peel up the last beet. Ah, oh, no, I dropped the beet. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Fresh piece of greaseproof paper down. Now let's cut the lovely beetroot into nice even sized chunks. I like how they're all beautiful different shapes and sizes. I've been caught red handed. Wear gloves to protect your hands, but I don't mind a bit of red on my hands. Then get them into a baking dish, drizzle over a little oil and a sprinkle of salt, then get them into your oven for around 45 minutes. Time goes so well with beets, so I'm gonna add a little time as well. Smells like caramelized beets up in here. So much sugar and sweetness in the beetroots that these have caramelized beautifully, wow. Once the beetroots are lovely and roasted, place a saucepan over a medium heat and then add some pickling spices. So I've actually got a pre-bought, pre-mixed pickling spice mix. And in this mix, there's things like mustard seeds, black peppercorns, coriander seeds, bits of herbs, bits of chili. It's a lovely mixture, very convenient. I'm gonna get these toasting off in my dry saucepan first. When you start to smell the spices, pour in some white wine vinegar. I always like to add some onion to my pickled beetroot too. I'm just gonna cut these into rings. An optional ingredient is some red chili. I like to split them down the middle and add them to the pickle for a little bit of spice. So to counteract that bit of spice and the vinegar in us, vinegar in us, the acidity in the vinegar, I'm gonna add some sweetness. I'm adding some sugar. This all helps preserve the beetroot for longer as well. Add enough sugar, then taste the vinegar to check for sweetness. Woo. Needs more. And I got some bay leaves. Look at this dried bush of bay leaves that I was given as a lovely gift from recent guest on the channel, Tom's mum, Lee. Watch it here. We're making a Malaysian feast. So I'm gonna add a couple of bay leaves, tear them, then put them in. You tear them, it just releases more of that aromatic flavor. Oh, I love bay. I love bay. <laughs> bay! Now look how beautiful that pickling mixture looks. That is good enough to bathe in, but it's gonna be a beautiful bath for our lovely Dwight Schrute beets. Before I add the beets, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. This is the best bit. Watch the color of this vinegar change. And don't waste any juices that are left behind in the roasting dish. Oh yes, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. So guys, if you haven't got a copy of my most recent cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen, you should get one now. And if you want a signed copy sent anywhere you are in the world, my mum actually sends my hand-signed copies out 
to you. So support the channel, support the family by getting a Plants Only Kitchen cookbook. I do have two other cookbooks, Christmas cookbook, which you should get if you wanna make Christmas vegan recipes and another Bible of reason, vegan recipes. My first cookbook, Vegan 100, is also on the website too. So please support, thank you. We'll leave this cook away for a few minutes and then get it into some sterilized jars or containers. When I say sterilized, all I've done is just put these in a pan of water and bring it to a boil. I'm very happy with this. It's gonna last months. You can't beat that. So let's finish off the video with a lovely tour of the garden. Now, for me, it looks a bit sad, but there's still a lot of vegetables and things that I'm eating on a regular basis from the garden. You would have seen in the first garden tour video I ever did that I talked a lot about this chard here and still months and months later, we're now in November, this chard is still beautiful and edible as ever. So super happy with chard, it's so productive and I serve loads of this at the pop-up restaurant Nana O's. Now this is a bit of an experimental bed for me because this is the first time that I've tried to grow broad beans and this is a crop that you can grow over the winter and it can be one of the first harvests of next year. So the broad beans have started popping up already. Now this bed was supposed to be just broad beans. I dedicated it to broad beans only, but to my surprise, I've got four potato plants popping up because this is where I grew potatoes a few months ago and I must have left a few potatoes behind and now they're sprouting and gonna produce a lovely harvest of potatoes in a few weeks, which is actually a nice surprise, but it just means that I'm gonna have less broad beans. This bed's a bit messy, I mean, they all are, but I've got a few lovely things still left in behind that are still gonna just keep in the ground really nicely, like this candy beetroot that is just getting so big. Another one that I could pickle, but I just like to just roast this or steam it and throw it into salads and things like that. Here is a, a crop that's just coming into season now. This is celeriac. They're a little small at the moment, but I'm gonna pick this one for you. Look, that is a tiny celeriac, but my first celeriac that I've grown and harvested. These are gonna stay in the ground. I'm sure they're gonna get a little bit bigger, but even if they don't, you can just peel this and roast it and throw it into stews and things like that. I love cel celeriac, also known as celery root in the US and other parts of the world. So, celeriacs in this as well as a few leftover little spring onions or leeks, I don't know what they are, and some more beetroot. Beetroot, celeriac, perfect vegetables that will just stay in the ground for months and months and months and I can just come out and harvest them whenever. This is a bed that gets used all the time, of course. My kale, cavolo, nero, I have this Austurian tree cabbage too, which is delicious. The leaves are getting smaller as it gets colder, but I remember last year, this just fed me all the way into January this year and then it flowers too so a great productive hardy vegetable my greens I couldn't live without them. So one thing that surprised me when I first got into gardening was that you could grow certain varieties of lettuce all through the year and it's hardy and it survives in cold weather so I've got a little bit of salad here I've got some over there too and this is just lovely to pick the outer leaves off. Lovely bit of lettuce few different varieties there. And another thing, celery, I have a bit of celery here. I've used up loads already. I made a, the most amazing celery juice with a load of other vegetables. If you click this link, it's something I have all the time. It's so good for you. Celery is amazing and it's continuing to do well. Obviously we have the garlic that I planted yesterday. I've just put some perspex sheeting over that to keep it nice and snug. I've got herbs and stuff dotted around everywhere, some lemon balm, which I have in my teas. Also click this link to see me make a lovely homemade tea that you can make yourself if you've got any anxiety and things like that. It's so calming. Lavender, some parsley. I love having herbs everywhere. This is some cabbage. Again, I'm experimenting with this. I can't remember what variety it is, but it seems to be doing well. I also have some rocket. I picked a load of this the other day. Lovely rocket. Again, this is another lettuce that can survive the cold. So a few months ago, we built this little raised bed that was the same size of this random piece of glass that I found hanging around. Uh, and it's created 
It's own little microclimate in here. It's very warm in here. And because I don't have a polytunnel or greenhouse at the moment, this hopefully will come in useful because I've got things like lettuce, Japanese greens, pak choy in here. I'm gonna grow some herbs in there too. And uh, also some nasturtium has just popped up. Look at that little beautiful leaf. And it tastes like wasabi amazing one of the most rewarding things i grew this year was my pumpkins giant pumpkins that, this is heavy honestly and uh this is just three of probably 10 i'd say i grew i've been slowly eating my way through them and they're so abundant there's so much meat and flesh inside this that i can cut a huge wedge off give it to my family eat a load myself make soup put it in stews so pumpkins one of the fa my favorite things to have grown this year just look at the size of that unbelievable and i think i'm going to do a recipe video soon where i see how just how many things i can grow i can make sorry with this huge pumpkin wonder what beautiful recipes i can make with it comment below what you'd want to see me make with this pumpkin and the good thing about pumpkins as well is that they uh, they look so beautiful and they last so long once they've been hardened off that they make really nice house ornaments and decoration so i've got a few of my pumpkins and my patty pan squashes that I've just dotted around everywhere. So there we go, there's the garden at the moment. It's a bit sad for me. It's still abundant, but not as abundant as it could have been. I was very busy this year, so I wasn't able to um, consecutively sow stuff so that I would have loads at this point, but I'm still making do with what I got. And next year I know what to do, I've learned. That's one thing I love about gardening, you're constantly learning. Next year, I'm gonna sow constantly. So at this point next year, I will have an abundance and hopefully a tunnel or some greenhouse of some sort that I can grow some lovely food in for a longer amount of time. So goodbye from very autumnal Wales. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something, inspired yourself to get into the garden and grow some stuff wherever you are in the world. It's the best thing. And I love it. I'll see you soon. It's like a medicine ball. Look at the strength. Yeah, boy.